Hey everyone, Brian and Kevin coming to you from the Storage Review Lab today, and we're looking at an interesting project. You know, we've been using Flash for, gosh, a decade at this point, right, in, yeah. the, in the data center. And in the early days, there was SATA, there was SAS, and along the way came NVMe. And we all accept that NVMe drives uh, are typically very, very fast. They offer larger capacities. There's all sorts of reasons to go NVMe, but SATA still has a pretty, uh, pretty big hold in the data center. And one of the reasons that people aren't adopting NVMe in some cases is that they just don't understand how cost effective they are now. Yeah, we've seen that discussion come up a lot where everyone's like, well, it's NVMe, it's going to cost more. And then right. when you start looking at the uh, capacity differences, they're getting pretty close to parity. Yeah, on price, but then on performance, the delta's unreal. It's not even uh, it's not even a fair fight. No, not really. So we worked with WD. We took uh, a bunch of their SATA SKU and then a bunch of their SN640 NVMe SKU. And we wanted to run the workloads that uh, the businesses run. We looked at things like VDI, SQL Server, and then some synthetic data as well. And what we saw doesn't surprise us any, but for any system designer out there that's still using SATA, we take a look at this because the data is really, really compelling and, and, and me, as you might expect, is the clear winner. But as we said, with the price gap closing, there's really almost no reason to, to be using the SATA product if you've got NVMe base available. No, definitely not. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this a little bit more. We've got a special guest I'm going to bring in here. We've got Swapna Yasarapu from uh, WD. Swapna, thanks for uh, joining us today. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Brian. So yeah, glad to have you. Too bad we're not in person, but these uh, virtual things are working out pretty well these days. So tell us a little bit about what you do. I know you're in the uh, the data center SSD group over there at WD. Just give us the, the highlights of, of your role and what's going on at WD. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so Swapna Yasarapu, I'm responsible for the data center SSD product portfolio here at WD. Um, so responsible for, of course, uh, defining them and then bringing these very exciting products to market. And there's been a lot going on lately with, with all of your products. Um, what are you guys excited about? I know you've got obviously the NVMe we're talking about, you've got Ruler, you've got all sorts of other things. Yeah, I mean, our you know our belief has been that NVMe is the the way of the future, and certainly it is making its way in the present as well. It has been the um, innovation engine that has been uh, accelerating the cloud usage of storage, as well as in the enterprise data centers, the traditional data centers. So for us, uh, seeing NVMe adoption across a uh, number of applications um, is uh, been a very interesting journey. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because Kevin, as we play with these things in the data center, like we just did, we did our application workloads to measure the differences to give some people background on that. But NVMe enables all sorts of other stuff, including like you could use these drives in an over fabric scenario. Yeah, it works well for uh, namespaces, things like that, where uh, you get different protections or different ways to provision them uh, across a... Uh, well, SATAs were never really designed outside of an, uh, a given local platform. NVMe is more of a... Uh, a sharing, like, better yes. for sharing. Yeah, yeah so we, we've been experimenting a lot lately with uh, the guys over at Store One, where they can enable uh, via software-defined storage take these drives and do so much more with them. Do you, are you guys, um, what are you seeing when you, when you look at uh, uh, fabrics and, and what you can provide there? So as you mentioned, right, NVMe has been enabled over fabric natively, which just makes this really efficient interface to connect into uh, the systems uh, even more so at this point. So what we see is that the number of applications that are getting powered by NVMe are just expanding, whether that is in, in uh, more um, database applications or is, if it's for enabling more efficient virtualization uh, for in this, in this time, right, for highly remote workforces, uh, whether that is for online uh, transaction processing that powers e-commerce uh, or for better management of both file and object storage services, um, the new TCO efficiencies that NVMe delivers um, is expanding the use cases across our customer bases. So uh, in the most recent times, actually this last year, 
Um, one of the very interesting uh, cases that you know I wanted to share with you uh, folks over here and with the with the team is a request that came to us through the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. It's called IHME. And uh, IHME was asked to analyze the massive amount of health data in a short period of time to understand the, um, uh, how they could combat COVID-19 uh, in 2020, um, especially when countries needed to know when COVID-19 could overwhelm their infrastructure and their ability to care for patients uh, and what they could do to avoid that even more importantly. So the challenge that IHME had was to take really a large scale of data, produce a large scale data model that they could use for forecasting, uh, including daily and cumulative impacts of COVID-19. So uh, our customer Cumulo um, utilized the Western Digital SN640 NVMe SSD and they enabled IHME to accommodate this sudden growth in the data set uh, to both ingest as well as to process the demands. And the results really stood out. Um, the Using the NVMe SSDs um, produced 6x faster performance over traditional SATA SSDs. And it allowed IHME to analyze up to 20 times more data per day and also increase the amount of data read per day by up to two petabytes. So huge improvements and uh, allowed them to actually um, understand the COVID impacts and then figure out how to avoid them or to combat them. Well, that one's an interesting one too, because you had a partner with that uh, Cumulo, I think. They've got another software defined product that that's really able to take advantage of these to, to, sh to Kevin's point, to share them collectively across uh, you know, several servers rather than being stuck with just what you have in that one box. Yeah, certainly agree with you. <laughs> That's great. So what else are you seeing in terms of use cases or other other places? I mean, these are this is a great example. Love seeing like real data in terms of why uh, why this difference matters. And, and when you talk about uh, being able to analyze more data, I mean, it makes sense, obviously, in, in this scenario that's uh, medical, but it you know, it holds true for any business that's processing data or trying to uh, to do things like machine learning. What other use cases are you seeing uh, pick up for NVMe? We are seeing that uh, with the direct, both the direct attach that NVMe enables and of course the uh, fabric attached uh, that NVMe enables that uh, flash and flash in itself and the higher performance that NVMe SSDs can provide are getting closer to uh, both the compute and also for expanded storage use cases. So it enables new um, you know, workload uh, uh, processing such as an AI ML, which is really the future for computing. Um, it enables real-time analytics for better business intelligence and for faster data capture uh, that's coming from IoT and edge devices. So there are new applications that are out in the world that NVMe is help power um, and uh, improve in uh, delivering solutions and insights. Okay. I mean, that, that makes uh, makes a lot of sense to us. You know, we see this every day. Why don't we take a look at some of the data that, uh, that you ran, Kevin, because, you know, we've got this customer case study. We've got just the general notion that NVMe is so much faster. Yeah. But let's show some of that data. So as we looked into uh, a lot of the use cases of uh, eight NVMe devices versus uh, eight of the uh, WSATA product, um, our our focus wasn't really a one versus the other in the sense of should you buy a SATA device or NVMe device. Right. We knew that an NVMe device would be faster. I think the key difference here is realizing how much faster it is. Uh, I mean, you're looking at workloads where it's not even a fair fight in terms of latency <laughs> or uh, throughput. Right. So we're looking at the uh, VDI Monday login. So this is a high saturation event as, uh, as people come in, turn on their PCs, or maybe they don't come in now. Maybe they're all doing it remotely. But the time doesn't change. You're still hitting... Uh, with these VDI remote sessions all at, in a similar time window. Yeah, and one of the fun things to uh, realize as we look through some of these workloads is uh, as these devices reach price parity for dollars per gigabyte, right. uh, you can get so much more done out of a single NVMe device than you could over an entire group of rated together SATA devices. So that's another really good point that the capability of the drive and the increased capacity 
gives you so much more flexibility. Now we ran these in what a Power Edge. R740? It was a Power Edge R seven forty XD. So main mainstream server, of course, these will work with any server that has NVMe bays. So that's uh, that's to be expected. But to Kevin's point, the number of drives you need, and this might not be great for uh, the WD sales team swap nut, but you may not need as many drives when you when you go to these high power uh, drives that have these high capacities. So uh, that's another uh, another big uplift when you look at going to NVMe. So we also ran some SQL. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, look we're looking at over a million IOPS versus uh, just around 200,000 IOPS at the peak. And if you look at the latency, uh, our, uh, the NVMe devices in this case barely went over uh, 200 microseconds versus a little bit over a millisecond for uh, the SATA devices. So latency then, let's talk about that for a second. You're looking at a uh, almost a 6x delta on uh, tr on transactions, right? Yeah. And keeping that latency low. So what? how does the latency translate in a real-world SQL environment? Well, f uh, more transactions per second. It's going to come down to uh, you have a... Uh uh, data processor or you're working with uh, no, real-time retail transactions, how many customers can you support? How many? Uh, what's the responsiveness of those uh, queries that are coming back? Right, the, and the responsiveness being a key in terms of uh, making sure your application is happy and, and operating as quickly and as efficiently as it can. Well, yeah, the customers and the, all the users are happy. <laughs> That's important too, uh, and then we have a we've got the the big show off chart here. So we we like the first two because it shows the the just the pure latency differences. It's good visual. But this one we we took a lot of our our favorite synthetic four corners and the numbers again are just incredible. That four K number, oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. As you're looking at uh, if you were buying these devices ten years ago, you'd be, you'd you'd see a um, uh, a group of drives hitting half a million IOPS. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. Right. But right now, I mean, that's not what you'd find in 2021. You're looking at devices where 4 million IOPS across eight is pretty It's pretty good. Well, yeah, and that's that's for the, the uh, random read, but even the 7030 stuff is really impressive too. It's just a huge... Almost a 10x. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's just a huge difference. There's there's a combination of uh, fantastic read and write performance, and you're just going to get so much more out of an N NVMe device in your SATA. Right, and that's you know, admittedly, those workloads are a little bit lighter. When we look at the database, though, with Sysbench, we still see you know really impressive numbers there too. Yeah, some of those are going to be held back versus uh, how you deploy your system in terms of uh, CP resources. Right, uh, but again. You can get a lot more out of a individual uh, NVMe device than you could a group of uh, SATA devices. So yeah. maybe more servers, denser servers, things along those lines. So Swapna, as you talk to um, your customers and, and, and users of your product, what, what's their reaction when they put this in? I mean, obviously, you've, you've got the, uh, the COVID uh, testing thing where they saw that immediate improvement. And, uh, are they just blown away? Like, what, what's the feedback you get from your, your customers? Yeah, certainly. From uh, our customers' perspective, the, the better metrics and across both the IOPS and throughput, and even more importantly, the latency metrics, uh, really allows our customers to use these uh, products for new applications. So it's hands down, you know, an easy benefit right our customers are directly able to translate into their systems so uh, it's very good to see it's positive as always <laughs> right so you know, we've hit on the pricing uh, a little bit in this conversation i know that uh, that the drive vendors don't like to talk pricing ex exactly because it depends on quantity and all that sorts of other thing but the data that we saw just out in retail uh, when we looked at Newegg on these things was admittedly uh, it was the difference was dollars, not hundreds of dollars. Uh, why why is, do you think there's still such a misconception out there that NVMe is expensive or has to be expensive? Well, I think when we really think about uh, NVMe solutions, our customers really focus on what is the total value it brings, right? So uh, it might have been something that was in the past where when it first, start, first started out, NVMe was a very niche product, but right now it is used across a number of uh, applications and it comes in various forms and, uh, you know, categories of products, right? Proliferation of form factors, et cetera, as well. 
So um, there are plenty of choices out there for the customers to choose from. Yeah, the, the form factor is a fun one. I know we've looked at Ruler a little bit. Systems are finally starting to come online. Lenovo's got some mainstream systems and others are looking at it. Uh, it seems almost there in terms of enterprise adoption. It's really been kind of a cloud play to this point. Uh, what are you what are you doing with Ruler? Or how are you talking about that or EDSFF or however you, however you like to refer to it? What's what's the messaging there? Um, the the next wave of NVMe uh, that's happening or the current wave as we can talk about it is adoption into um, into storage applications, right? So using NVMe based uh, SSDs for um, large storage data sets. And uh, that's where having dense um, uh, capacity and being able to put large capacities in a dense one new form factor is enabled by the E1 uh, form factors. And that's where the benefits come in. And there are, um, for the high capacity, the E1 long is the form factor. Right. And uh, that's, that's where our customers can take advantage of it and are. Yeah, that'll be pretty exciting to see that come to market, see solutions come to market there and, and see what the server guys do, because they've got all sorts of um, flexibility and design now, especially when you look at these emerging form factors. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the storage solutions tend to be trailing versus the server vendors that right. uh, are trying to fit the, uh, what, the well, what the storage guys <laughs> use in one generation. Right. So, you know, overall, when we get back to the core message of what we were, were talking about today, the SATA drives, they still have a place. They're, yeah. they're affordable, they're great for boot, they're great for, what, maybe some f flash file shares if you want something high performance there. Yeah, they still have the use cases, but it, you really shouldn't use them as your first go-to option if you have U.2 bays in your server. And there we go. We saw the data, we know the prices have come down and are getting pretty comparable. So there's really not any reason to, uh, to be avoiding NVMe at this point. In fact, uh, we, use it every time we can because of the performance benefits are just that dramatic. Even doing simple things, moving files around, uh, really dramatic. Uh, Swapna, what, leave us with a, a, a good takeaway as, as we sign off here. Yeah, I think the, the big takeaway from us is that NVMe is where the innovation is happening and it enables right. a new tier of performance, diversity and TCO advantages. Uh, provides a number of new capabilities that enables new applications to take advantage of the um, the NVMe SSDs. So uh, our big takeaway is uh, uh, check it out, try it, mm -hmm. and then for more information, uh, go to www.westerndigital.com, where uh, our portfolio of NVMe products are uh, uh, provided to you. Awesome. Appreciate you uh, joining us today, talking uh, talking NVMe, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get those uh, the system integrators switched over pretty soon. Thanks for taking the time and uh, for the invitation today. All right. Thanks. Thanks.